Hi, I'm your host, Brenda Close. And I'm your co-host, Kaylee Smalley. And this is our podcast, Treasuring Education. Education. Welcome back to our Empowering Parents podcast series. Today, we're going to dive into a topic that can really make a difference in how our kids learn, multi-sensory learning strategies. Multi-sensory learning simply means engaging multiple senses during the learning process. It's a really powerful approach that helps children grasp and then retain that information a lot more effectively. Right. Multisensory aligns closely with two ideas that we've discussed in previous episodes, the VARC modes of learning and Gardner's multiple intelligences. And multisensory learning strategies actually align perfectly with the VARC model. Um, by incorporating those visual aids, the auditory elements, the hands-on activities, and even those reading and writing tasks, we're providing opportunities for our children to engage their preferred sensory channels. And Gardner's theory suggests that there are different types of intelligences. If you need a memory refresher on the eight different types, we discuss each intelligent type in episode 2.1. Multisensory learning allows us to tap into those various intelligences. So with these ideas in mind, let's talk about how multisensory strategies can be applied when it comes Uh, To learning and teaching, let's say, new vocabulary. One strategy that works well is incorporating visual aids. You can use flashcards or pictures to represent words or concepts. That's a great idea. And for example, let's say your child is learning the word avocado. (laughs) So you could show them a picture of an avocado while saying the word out loud. And then this way, they're not only hearing the word, but they also see that visual representation of it which helps reinforce their understanding. That makes sense. Another effective strategy is kinesthetic learning, which involves physical activities that engage the body. For vocabulary learning, you can have your child act out words or use gestures to associate meaning with movement. Engaging the body when learning new things is so effective. I can imagine teaching a young child about avocados by incorporating that stretch involved in picking one from a tree. Or uh, spelling out the word with your arms, like YMCA style. (laughs) That would be fun. Then there's also tactile learning, which involves touch and hands-on experiences. When it comes to vocabulary that's a little more abstract than the word avocado, you can encourage your child to write words with their fingers in sand, Play-Doh, or (laughs) even ice cream. That'd be a little messy, but yeah, I get it. (laughs) So tactile relates to the sense of touch, which is really part of the bodily kinesthetic mode. And a very tactile experience for our avocado example is to cut into it and explore the different layers and textures. So this really builds those neural connections in the brain. Using the word avocado, you can allow them to actually handle the fruit while saying the word. It's a fruit, right? It is a fruit. fruit. Okay. (laughs) So this active involvement helps create a stronger connection between the word and its meaning. Perfect. And let's not forget our senses of taste and smell, because they apply too. That's why toddlers like to put everything in their mouths. Oh, yeah. (laughs) can test. So those um, senses, the gustatory and olfactory, they don't quite make it to the educational models, but they are definitely important senses for learning. Now, let's not forget about auditory learning. This approach focuses on the sense of hearing. When it comes to vocabulary, you can use rhymes, songs, or even create silly sentences to help children remember new words. That's a fun way to learn. And for instance, the word avocado, uh, you could come up with a rhyme or a song. (laughs) Funny you mentioned that, because here's a fun rhyme about our fruit of the day, the avocado. Avocado green and smooth, nature's treasure, a sensory groove. Take it in your hands, give it a gentle squeeze, feel the texture, it's sure to please. Slice it open, reveal the vibrant hue, creamy flesh waiting for you. Scoop it out, feel its velvety touch, spread it on toast. Oh, it's just too much. Yeah, that really was too much, but thank (laughs) you for sharing. (laughs) My challenge for you now, Kaylee, is to set it to music. Yeah, I think I'm going to pass on that one. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, so now two additional multisensory learning strategies that can make a real difference in how our kids learn are pulled from Gardner's theory, naturalistic intelligence and reading and writing. Right, and those don't hit in the VARC model. Right. There is a proven correlation between activities in nature and successful learning. So 
nature provides that rich sensory experience that can enhance learning and understanding. And there's just something about being outside. When it comes to vocabulary, you can take your child outside and explore that natural world together and then use whatever you find to connect it to the new words. So that's actually something I use in language therapy. I take my students outside for a number of reasons, but one reason is to practice new skills um, and identify the things in nature in order to target sounds um, or new language. Hmm. So this strategy can also help students generalize their skills outside of the classroom. It helps them to create stronger memories about the topics, and it strengthens those neural connections we're always talking about. (laughs) Right, right. I love that you do that with your kids. Me too. (laughs) If your child is learning something more, a vocabulary word that's more abstract, like the word serenity, uh, you could take them to a peaceful spot in nature, like a park or a garden, and talk about how being in such surroundings can create that sense of calm and serenity. And then back to our favorite word, avocado. You might find objects with the same shape, the same size, the same color, the same texture, etc. And then incorporate that spatial intelligence that I definitely need more practice with. (laughs) Yes, you do. (laughs) Uh, Journaling, too, is a fantastic way for kids to engage their senses while practicing vocabulary. Encourage them to keep a journal where they can write about their experiences, thoughts, and feelings every day. That's a good suggestion. So like for the word, the abstract word, Mm -hmm. gratitude, your child can use their journal to write down things they are grateful for. So this helps them not only understand the meaning of the word, but then that can also cultivate a a positive mindset. It has multiple purposes. Absolutely. Journaling allows children to express themselves creatively, and it develops their writing skills while reinforcing that vocabulary in a personal and meaningful way. Yeah. And let's not forget the power of combining strategies. So imagine taking your child on a nature walk and having them journal about sensory experiences. Um, They can use words like bliss or mystery to describe the things they see, hear, and feel. Absolutely. Combining those strategies helps you to provide your child with a rich, multi-sensory learning experience. It deepens their connection to the vocabulary and to the world around them. And remember, the goal is to just make learning engaging, make it memorable and fun for your child. So nature provides visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and tactile opportunities in abundance. It really does. And we hope that you found these strategies helpful. Remember, it's your creativity and guidance that can truly empower your child's learning journey. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will catch you next time with more practical tips to support you as you support your children. Take care. Follow us on your favorite podcast platform to get notifications of our next podcasts. And sign up for our newsletter at www.treasuringeducation.com.